So what are gonna be some of the issues here? So usually we're talking about the store is where the point of sale happens and you might use a, Sh a Shopify, an Amazon, an eBay or something like that. Obviously, if you're using like a Shopify, for example, the, the that app helps you to have an online presence, helps you to facilitate the sale. And then some of the tracking of like the inventory and whatnot is gonna be in Shopify, but it's usually gonna be by quantity, not by not tracking like cost on the first in, first out or last and that, and that kind of thing, because the goal is to facilitate the order, making sure you have what is needed to fulfill the logistical needs of meeting the orders and, and making the sales. Now, then you, you might have an intermediary like a payment processing, like a PayPal or a Stripe, and then you've got the QuickBooks uh, software, or you could use like a zero or something similar kind uh, of system. Now, now the issue again is going to be, well, how can I get this information into the accounting software? Because if it was an online, if it was an on ground store, I would enter the data as I make the purchases and make the sales into QuickBooks software. But now the sales are being facilitated on the Shopify or Amazon side of things. They're the ones that have all the sales records and I don't want to recreate invoices, all the invoices and whatnot in account in the accounting software. I want to pull that information in. How could I do that? Well, you could, you could try to just connect your accounting software to your bank again, and just wait till it comes for, through the bank but you're losing a lot of detail to do that because you're gonna be missing the fees and all that kind of stuff that's gonna be associated with the store. You could try to try to connect the accounting software to the Shopify, Amazon, or eBay using either third-party applications or possibly QuickBooks Online, which, is, which, which some have very good integrations, but you gotta be careful on which software you're gonna use However, even then you could run into issues if you're using a payment processor like a PayPal or a Stripe. In other words, if you connect directly to say like a Shopify store, for example, you might be using the Shopify pay in order to help facilitate uh, your payment when people buy stuff. And in that case, everything's happening through Shopify. So when you pull in that data into your accounting software, then any chargebacks and all that kind of stuff should be coming directly from the, the the website you're making the sale on into the accounting software. However, if you have this intermediary platform like a PayPal or Stripe that's helping to facilitate the sale, you might have some chargebacks or some fees that are happening on this payment level. And if you're, so you're gonna be missing those if you're just looking at the store connection into QuickBooks. So that's where the added level of, of complexity uh, uh, can come into play on that middle, that middle tier. And then also again, the inventory is typically gonna be tracked at Shopify, Amazon, or eBay, at least the quantity of inventory, you're gonna try to populate the quantity of inventory in order to make sure you can logistically fulfill the inventory needs. However, when you pull that information into the accounting software, we need to convert it to dollar amounts and usually use some kind of flow assumption to do that, such as a first in, first out or a weighted average kind of assumption. So those are gonna be some of the issues we'll talk about. And in future presentations, what we will do is think about the normal inventory flow as if you're not doing a Shopify store, but rather on ground store and then as we think about that flow, we're going to think about the, the, the variance, the things that are different in an e-commerce store, and then how we can basically uh, fulfill the needs of the e-commerce store, which are going to be a little bit different once we've identified what those issues are.